Brethren, pray the Lord. One of the episodes of Finding God. And we are still in our character study. We started on various women in the Bible who impacted their generation. And now we are looking at the one of the women who seemed to be a little bit in obscurity because she, uh, she was one of the uh, sisters of Moses. And a few things happened, but she played a very, very, very big role in the salvation story, in the salvation history of the Jewish people. We wound up at the point when he said that she stood at a distance with care. And it is then that Moses was saved at the banks of River Nile. It is then that Moses was taken into the palace of Pharaoh, where he grew up as one of the princes there. And it is then that actually Moses trained to be the leader of God's people. There he did, he trained, and he learned a lot from the palace. So God does things, and he does them positioning people differently and variously. And so Miriam, the little act that she did, led Moses into bigger you know, environments where he learned greater things, and it is from then that he came back and started the leadership roles among the people of Israel, the Hebrews, as they were called by then. And he struggled with the Pharaoh, and eventually, when you read Exodus chapter 12, the people of Israel were liberated, and they moved out, and they went on a journey led by Moses, which Moses was taken care of by his uh, elder sister, who was Miriam. And something that I wanted to add, that I want to add to this, this episode, is that Miriam played that, but when they, they left, time came when they reached the, uh, the borders of the Red Sea, and the Bible talks about the miraculous crossing into the other side of the sea. God using Moses to partition, to part the waters, and they gave way, and they crossed over. So something of interest that I want to share about Miriam now in chapter 15 is when Miriam, the other lady who oversaw Moses' welfare at the banks of River Nile, is the same woman now who sings a song also of deliverance when the people of Israel had crossed over. And in chapter 15 of Exodus, verse 20 and um, 21, the Bible mentions Miriam as in this way. Miriam the prophetess, can you imagine? Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancing. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord. For he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. Can you imagine a few, just those few lines, but he moves out with the women, with the timbrels, with those symbols, singing and dancing. And he says, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider have been hurled into the sea. Now, this is something that blesses my heart about this lady, about Miriam leading the women to get out. And so this is the first musical something that is recorded. Of course, the Moses had sung a song, and um, you know he praises the Lord, that then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song, and I will, he says, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The same words, but our emphasis is on this lady, this young woman. Maybe by then she was not a young woman at this point. She had grown because okay, Moses was now a big man, and they were all big people. And now she leads the women to praise the Lord with their instruments. And now this is something that um, I picked with interest, that how God may raise choristers in our midst, that how God can raise women and men 
who will sing hymns, who will sing songs. And so those that are in the ministry of singing, those who are in the ministry of choirs, those who are in the ministry of praising God in the churches, Miriam led the women at her time and she went out. And the Bible does mention that Miriam, the prophetess. Can you imagine? And so this humble lady, humble young person that was watching over the life of Moses at the banks of River Nile. She's now the prophetess and she sings and she leads other women. And I will pray that women lead others. We have seen women have done it and how we pray that they will continue in this ministry of leading others to praise God, to talk about things that are developmental, to talk about things that energize others. And so um, the journey that was, she was one of the shepherds. She was one of the leaders. Miriam led this in the procession. So there is power in praise. Moses sang, Miriam sang. There is power in praise. And the Bible does mention that praise focuses on God. The reason why Miriam says, sing to the Lord, the focus was on God. And you remember these episodes that we're doing, finding God. And Miriam led the other women in finding God. By doing what? By singing praises to him. And just like we see, we read in Psalms 150 verse 2, focusing God and in Psalm 150, it says, let us pray the Lord, clap hands. And this is the thing that actually we are created to do. And Miriam gives us an example here of praising the Lord and leads other women. And how I pray that actually we lead other people into praising God. And this is very, very important. And another thing about praise is that praise makes the enemy flee. Yes. And this is what had happened. You see, the people had, you know, were still moving, but it is a word of encouragement. It's a word of, hey, people, let us move on. It's, hey, it's the, the people, it's a wake-up call. Let us continue with the journey. And we are also sojourning. We are also moving. We are also on our journey. And we need praise. We need worship so that we gain strength to continue with the journey. And remember this people had just started. They had just crossed the Red Sea. And Miriam stands and says, hey, women, sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. And he refers to what had just happened. In the, in, the, in the Red Sea, the enemy drowns. And remember here, in this song, God fights our battles. And to this we say, Amen. Because she says, the horse and its rider have been hurled into the sea. Now this is the point, that when God does something for you, yes, it is evident that Miriam gives us an example that raise up and lead others. So that actually you are blessed to bless. I've always mentioned this and I'll keep mentioning it because it blesses me. When God has blessed you in any way, this is the point that we're making here. And so Miriam does praise God and praise makes enemies flee. And we see this in Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 22. And the Israelites exhibit this many, many times singing and of course um, praising. But of course, don't forget the story of Jericho. The fall of Jericho in Joshua chapter, in the, in the beginning chapters of the book of Joshua, that when they reached the walls of Jericho, you remember the Bible says it was singing and praising and the walls of Jericho collapsed. And so in this episode, we are saying that actually there's power in praise and we need to continue on. Yes, are you happy? Sing a praise, sing a song. Well, yes, are you are in sadness? Yes, sing a song or play music and it will uplift your soul because then that actually the enemy flees. And the story of this second Chronicles chapter 20 tells us about the singing and the enemies flee. And also the story of the Jericho, of Jericho falling, Jericho walls falling is about, uh, you know, the power of praise. And so friends, let us find God and finding God there is power and in finding God there is victory. And these people were victorious on their journey because God was with them. And because they found him and that moved, they moved on like that. And praise invites God's presence indeed. Praise invites God's presence just like we read in Proverbs in Psalms 22 verse 30. I mean verse 3. This is very, very important that um, praise invites God's presence and we need to follow on. This is very, very important. 
And when you are alone, are you devastated? Are you sick? Are you not well? Then music can produce a melody in your heart. And who knows? Because actually it will be dealing with some of the stresses, some of the anxieties that will leave you. And you may be weak, but music uplifts you. And now this one is inviting God's presence. And indeed, because actually, um, Miriam says, praise, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. And even Moses had said it before, that the horse and its rider have been hurried to the sea. He repeated the same words that had sung with Moses earlier. And so, my friends, this is very, very important. And sing praise to God. Are you happy? Sing praise to God. Are you not well? Sing praise to God and continue on finding God through music. But one other little lesson that I pick from Miriam is actually time comes, even when this has happened, these good things have happened. Miriam and Aaron divert a little bit. And this is one other huge lesson that I can pick from this lady, Miriam. And when they, she teamed up with her brother, elder brother, um, um, uh, Aaron, they um, ridiculed Moses. They became impatient with Moses. They became frustrated with Moses. And they started, you know, their journey was not good and they started questioning the authority of Moses. But on the, the time when they questioned, when they ridiculed, when they became frustrated, they complained very bitterly about Moses, but God did not leave that go and, and, you know, unpunished. Just like we read in Numbers chapter 12, verses 5 to 9, and the Bible says that then the Lord came down because they disgruntled themselves in, and God came down in a pillar of cloud and uh, stood at the doorway of the tent and he called Aaron and Miriam when they had both come forward. He said, hear my words. Of course, okay, God punishes iniquity. God punishes things okay, that we do that are not right. And so, because they had ridiculed, because they had become frustrated with Moses, because they had spoken evil of Moses, God did punish. And so in verse 9, that, so the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he departed. But when the cloud had withdrawn over them, behold, Miriam was leprous, but leprous as white as snow. God punishes. This is something that we find. There are people that play with God. The people that actually think that actually God is just, you know, um, is so good. Yes, he's good, but he punishes iniquity. Just like a parent who is loving. And when you child go wrong, God punishes iniquity. God punishes wrongdoing. And so let us learn a lesson that yes, God is good. But of course, the people these days, they think that actually God is just there. God, God is a holy God. God is a jealous God. And now in this portion, we see Miriam, well, with all the good things that he has done, but this act of disputing Moses' authority, this act of complaining and frustrating, I mean, getting frustrated and doing something that, you see, anger can cause you trouble. And this addresses the issue of anger in our lives. And because actually when you are angry, you can do anything. And so God was getting down to the root and saying, no, 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 this is not right. And so God does punish. And it is important that when you become impatient with somebody, it is important that when you get frustrated with somebody, you know, it is when you become difficult with somebody, now you need to find a way of sorting your differences. And God is not happy with what is happening in the church today. People getting frustrated with others, people getting complaining and talking ill of others. God does not desire that. And of course, actually, David knew the secret. Because actually, I mean, God had chosen Saul in his, you know, his wrongdoing. David never raised a hand against Saul. And the reason why David, in his, you know, in his understanding, says a point here that touch not the anointed of God. But this does not also give opportunity to the leaders that have been chosen by God to do wrong things. Because someone will do anything and then say, because actually the Bible says, touch not the anointed of God, and they go doing wrong things. No, that's not the point. But the point is, let us tame our anger. Let us tame, you know, you know whatever happens when something burns in you, you can end up doing something wrong. We have seen people that have killed others 
Someone has speared another. Someone has knifed another person. Someone has given another person poison because of anger that burns. But remember that actually in this, from this portion, the Bible is telling us actually Miriam, because Miriam and Aaron, and they mentioned only Miriam who became leprous. And because, you know, there was something that, that was peculiar there. And so we need to be take care of the things that we say, the things that actually that we act. And we pray to God to give us his binoculars to see which direction to take in this, uh, our journey as we move. Because these people were going the same direction. They were leading the Israelites. They were going to the promised land. But along the way, there were complaints. There were, you know, there were frustrations here and there. Each one was getting difficult with another. Just like we do in our families. Just like we do in our homes. Just like we do at our workplaces. But anger should not lead you into sin. But this is something that actually God was not happy with. And the reason why um, David knew the secret that touched not the anointing of God. And we need not to instigate a rebellion. And of course, actually, there are people who are at the forefront of instigating rebellion in organizations, rebellion at workplace, rebellion in the family, rebellion, and the rebellion is punishable. And so we need to take a leaf from this lady, Miriam, whatever she did, but God singled it out and then said, no, 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 this is not the way to, people should go. And God defends uh, his people and may he continue defending us, may he continue defending you, but also take care of your anger. Now, Miriam, the woman that we've been talking about, leaves us great lessons. The good lessons that we pick from her, but even from the bad that we see, we also pick a lesson that we need to move on. And so even when we don't know what might happen in the future, let us continue helping other people like we saw in the beginning. But in this episode here, we see Miriam taking a role, and she tried to take a role that was not hers, complaining and there are some people who are very good at wanting to take roles that are not theirs. They just want to grab, be it in the family, be it at the workplace. But may God help us to attain ours, get yours. Get yours that is rightfully got. Work at it. Are you a student? Are you a mother? Do your role. Are you a father? Do your role. Are you a son? Do your role. Are you a daughter? Do your role. Don't hijack. Don't try to hijack another person's responsibility. But of course, I we see people doing this every day. But we learn from this portion that God can restore us when we get back to the rightful thinking. May God who blessed these Israelites on their journey, may God who blessed Miriam, may God who restored Miriam, but of course, actually after leprous, Moses, Moses, Moses prayed for them, and um, Moses prayed for her, and uh, you know she, she became well again, and this is something that I desire that God will do for us, to restore us. Even when we go astray, we need to repent. We need to get back on our knees and ask God to forgive us. But we need to take care of our lives. And as we continue finding God, Miriam leaves us very, very wonderful lessons that we pick from her. And Miriam, the woman in the Bible, leaves great lessons to the ladies, to the women, but also to us. They are the women's sons and daughters that we shall move our journey. We are on our journey to the promised land. So shall we move together with care? Shall we be moved together while taming our anger? We need to move together, not wanting to take that which is not yours. Because at this point, Miriam was trying to take that which was not hers and that which was punishable. And so may God help us during our generation. And may God help you to pick some one, two, three things to learn from as you find God. And that also find God. And you can be in one accord with him. And you'll be pleased with what he sees in us. And he will bless you and he will bless me. And may we stay blessed in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>